Now, like most recording musicians in the 21st century, I use a computer, I use an audio interface. Everything's very lovely. You've got audio plugins. You can do anything you like. However, I also, as you can see, I've got a veritable junkyard of stuff. I've got my quarter inch Revox here for warming up digital recordings, and my little eight track reel to reel over here. Today, I'm going to demonstrate this. Now, this is the Alesis Quadroverb. Alesis was a company formed in Rhode Island in 1984. This particular bit of kit is 28 years old and it works perfectly. Now, what is it? So for anyone under 30, stuff like this is just a bit of an alien concept, hardware. It's all about software now. Now I've got this thing here, which has got two inputs, two audio inputs, two audio outputs, some MIDI Bypass Advance. Oh, what's all that about then? On the front, we've got a display here. Now, we're used to computer displays, which are nice and big and colorful and lovely and pretty and fluffy. However, this is a two line display that measures about three quarters of an inch by about two and a half inches. So you've got to be like this. That was what we used to have to do. So if I just bring this to the camera here, you can see that we've got a level meter, an input and an output control, then the remains of a sticker, then the display, and a load of buttons. So, what does it do then? Well, I'm gonna demonstrate that. I'm going to use a mixing desk to plug it in. Now, what you do with this, with the Quadroverb, is you take an output from your mixing desk, an AUX output, into the machine and then bring the output of the machine back into the mixing desk. So that means that you can send any signals anywhere you like. And I'm gonna set all this up and then you can hear how good this thing sounds and how flexible it is. So you join me here at my control panel. I've got the Quadroverb on the shelf over here and this other camera, you can see the tiny little orange display. It really is minute and it's just text. No pretty pictures here. So I've got the Quadroverb here. If I move the camera slightly to the right, you can see all the other buttons, which have little LEDs that light up when you press them. And then on the left, we've got an input and an output and a level meter. So you can see what's going in. That meter shows what's going into the reverb unit, not what's coming out of it. And then over here, I've got my little mixing desk on the deck here, which is basically used to feed the reverb unit. And what I've got, I've got a microphone, I've got an electric guitar and an electric violin going into three channels of my desk. And on each channel, I can decide how much of that level I want to send to my reverb. That's kind of how this works. So the reverb is connected to the mixing desk with three cables. One of them comes from the mixing desk and feeds the reverb, and the other two are the stereo output of the reverb unit. Now the stereo reverb, you can have a stereo input here as well, but most people would just use the mono input, just fire something at it and it makes an effect. This is a brave new world. The Quadrivo came out in 1989, 30 years ago. This one is a mere whippersnapper at 28 years. So I'm gonna start by showing you the first program here, which is called EQ plus chorus plus delay plus reverb. Now this really is, this is the first program that you would open up when you see the Quadriverb switch on. And it essentially, well, it's the name, Quadriverb, four effects at once. EQ, chorus, delay, and reverb. And you have full control over all of those. So I'm going to narrate using the mic now, and I'll show you how this is going to work. One, two, 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 one, two. So you can hear a bit of chorusing, you can hear the echo, and of course you can hear the reverb. Now, any of these effects, you can decide the level of each one. That's pretty good. So you're not just stuck with all the four effects at once. Now, looking over here, we've got a button called Mix. If I press that, the whole display changes. So direct post EQ. Or pre EQ. Post EQ. Pre EQ. Here we go. Master. That, 
is the overall output of the quadruple. You could set that higher if you wanted. And then we have the EQ output level, the pitch output level, the pitch. That means, well, in sort of modern digital audio workstation parts, that is the same as modulation. That's chorus, flanging, and phasing. So if I just take the pitch level up, you can hear that there's more of a chorus, more of a sort of washy sound there. Delay. Now you can hear there was a little bit of distortion there. Sorry. You could hear that there was a little bit of distortion there. So if you do set the, the output level too high, it'll overload inside and then the the digital to analog converter that is part of the gorge verb won't be able to handle it. So but I've taken the delay away there. Two, 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 two. And then the reverb. The reverb. The reverb. I can tell. Now the quality, now the quality of, this, of this, this, you can hear that it's, it's, it's really very, very, very good. This is a 30 year old piece of kit, nearly. So it's hugely capable and actually it still has a very, very serious use in that you can take it to a gig, put it on a mixing desk and you've got lots and lots of effects that you can use in a live situation but I've got it in my studio here occasionally I use it if I'm using a digital recorder uh, instead of a computer and it's very good to be able to keep that on the back burner in case your computer decided to fail for example so, 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 so. now I'm going to, to, to come out of this actually I'm going to I'm going to change the pitch so I'm going to take the delay down and I'm going to take the reverb down there we go, pitch output level 99. Now, I'm going to change the pitch thing. At the moment, it's a chorus. So if I press the pitch button up here and go back to the display, I have a stereo chorus. I could change that. A mono flanger or a stereo flanger. Pitch detune or a phase shifter. How lovely. Phasing. Now, I can basically change, if I go up to, if I've got pitch shifter, I can go within the pitch shifter and start playing with this one, play with the speed of the phaser, for example. One, two, play with the speed, I mean down, it's all space age and lovely. Everything is completely possible. Now, what made this a very special piece of kit indeed was that you could address some of these features via MIDI. So you could have sliders that would change the amount of reverb or the delay time. That was a real boon. That meant that you had real time control over the effects. Of course, you had to use a pen and paper to note down what you had, what sliders did what, but you could have a very complex setup using this. So the MIDI implementation on this you name it, you could do anything with it. So if I, for example, go to config Now, mod on here, modulation, not to be confused with the chorus phasing and flanging that you'd have on your original, on the, rather on your modern digital audio workstation. This essentially gives you control. So that at the moment we've got the pitch bend on a keyboard. You could do anything with that. You could just have the, well, you can see the options that you have. And then the modern, the, how much it changes is the amplitude. And then modulation too. You can have after touch, which is a feature of modern keyboards, a note number, note velocity controller. You have 128 different MIDI controllers. Oh, actually, it's 121 because some of the, some of them were actually included before. 
So things like the pitch bend, that's a controller. So the remainder of your controllers. And you can have eight different controls. So eight sliders on your mixer, on your MIDI mixer, to control eight different functions of the quadrivoque. Really, really neat. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anything like that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd show you. But if we just look at some of the other programs. One. I think you'll agree that that is a very decent reverb indeed. Really, really nice. One, two, 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 two. One, two, three, four, five. With a guitar, sounds really dreamy and really nice. great electric violin it just it can warm up a seemingly sort of sterile instrument like an electric violin there's no sort of wooden box for it to use You name it, do anything. Now, of course, I could, I haven't got uh, quite enough room in my little lair here to have a piano, but you could use a piano with Quadroverb. You could use anything that's got an audio output with this. So, just moving on. Post EQ reverb. Now, EQ, let's have a little look at this. There is quite a lot you can do here. Low EQ frequency, low EQ amplitude. What does amplitude mean? That's a bit of an old school term. Amplitude is the same as volume, really. So if I want to boost that low end, I can just turn up the amplitude a bit and you can hear it sounds really, really boomy. Or I could decide to take it away so that it sounds really trebly and there's very little of the reverb that retains the bass of my voice. So, if you press both value buttons together, it goes back to a default value. There we go. So these nice little shortcuts, you don't have to scroll through. Then we have uh, other frequencies, including the bandwidth. Now, what's a bandwidth? It's the same as Q on a modern digital audio workstation. So one octave, well, that's the same as if I've got my mid-frequency of 2,000 hertz, it might boost from 1.5 to 3 kilohertz. An octave means a doubling of frequency. So if I just just go up with that, you can hear that it sounds really nasal now. And then I can change my frequency up or down, 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 up or down. Very nice. And then high EQ frequency, I could go really, really tinny now. I'm too tinny. And there we go, there's a bit about the EQ. Now you can, if I go to configuration, which is the little button over here, I can change the EQ. Graphic EQ. Graphic EQ. But there's a delay there as well. So we have to go to mix, mix, and take the take the delay output level down. EQ output level. Let's just bring that up a bit, and then go to the EQ itself. And you have a graphic equalizer now. 16 hertz, 32, 62, etc. It just goes up octaves every time. One, two, 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 two. There's four kilohertz. So I can either boost that or cut that. So it's basically like an old school graphic equalizer. Oh, one kilohertz, how lovely. 
I can scoop that out to make it sound like a radio broadcast, and maybe I can just uh, turn up the treble a little bit, and it makes it sound like a really late-night broadcast, especially if I take the bass up and... And uh, now it's the end of the day's broadcasting, and I wish you all a very peaceful night. Good night. So, there we go. Now, I'm just going to go back to my... Now, there's a throwback from the past. The idea of a gated reverb. It drives me crazy. Ah. She drives me crazy. Ah. So, what it is, is it's a reverb. One. But it stops very suddenly. Oh, two. Ah. Oh, it stops suddenly. Love it. Now basically that means that you've got a so look where is it gate hold time one uh, uh, two you can decide to have that gate and it also it'll trigger <laughs> reverb gated level Two, two. So you can actually have that. You can change the reverb as well as the gated reverb. You can literally you can play with this till the you can play with this till the cows come home. And there's so many things that you can do with it. Now, just going back to uh, the stereo flange. Oh, lovely, love it. How lovely. Ping pong delay. 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 It's basically left and right, so it goes left and right. Now I've literally just received. Literally just received. Literally just received a comment on one of my videos from somebody saying, "You're talking in stereo, but it's a bit sad because you got left and right the wrong way round." So hopefully this will be right. One, one left. One left. Right. One left. One left. One left. One left. One left. One left. Hopefully. Hopefully. You may not be able to tell. You may not be able to tell. Detune plus 12. What does that mean? Let's have a look. Let's investigate. So let's go to pitch. Detune amount plus 12 plus 99. Plus 12 is plus 12 cents. So 99 is essentially nearly a semitone, and you can go the other way as well. So you can have it slightly lower than it was. Leslie. What's a Leslie? Well, a Leslie speaker is a rotating speaker, as used with a Hammond organ. And it basically just throws things around the stereo image. Now, if I look at this, stereo's motor control. What's the Leslie motor control? Well, on a Leslie speaker, you have fast and slow speeds selectable via a little lever on the front of the Hammond organ. You can see my demo of the Hammond on my channel. Essentially, you have slow and fast. Leslie speed slow, Leslie speed fast. Hey. And it takes time to speed up and slow down, just like the original Hammond organ. How lovely. So, five band parametric equalizer, that's fine. Small room, medium room, large room. Small hall, small hall, medium hall, large hall. Concert hall one, concert hall two. You decide, there's so many different reverbs on here. Vocal plate. What's a plate? Well, a plate is what it means. It's a big lump of metal with a transducer fixed in the middle, which is a speaker, and then two microphone tr transducers on either end, which basically is your left and right. We used to have them at uh, Townhouse Studio when I worked there in the 90s. Massive, great, it's a separate room for the reverb. So you've got a large vocal plate. Oh yes, you have. Low diffused, ch rich chamber. There's all sorts of reverbs available on here. Mono flanger, that's fine. 
might like that. Mono flange would sound quite cool with a guitar, really. Now, Alesis did manufacture one of these, especially for guitarists, which had a guitar input. You can't really plug a guitar straight into this without it sort of loading the pickup and stripping a bit of the top end away. But the Alesis Quadroverb GT was the guitar model, which was used for years and years by many, many guitarists. Now, ooh, twitch flanger. Now, going, going through, through all, all of these, 1500 milliseconds 1500 milliseconds 1500 milliseconds 1500 milliseconds that's a long time 1500 milliseconds in the, this the, in this era of the 1980s that was a very long delay time of course you can have anything you like now with modern ram being able to handle those sort of signals echo to the left Ooh, ooh, it's gone to my left headphone. Mr. Stereo, I'm going to check this on the video before I release it, but this definitely goes to the left. There's oh, flanged echoes. So many things here. Now, one thing that I am going to just bring. is the sampler. It's got a sampler built in. It's only one and a half seconds, but it's better than nothing. So, let's have a look. Now, when you use this, you use the bypass, 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 bypass. You can set it to loop as well. If I do something like this, one, two, three. One, two, three. Now, I could have... I could have uh, just looking... Ah, there we go. Under delay, there is the option to loop it. One, two, three. 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 Of course, this has limited use, but we could actually change the the sample start and the sample end so we could get, get a one two three that is, is actually a waltz not one two three and a bit so the sample length one two three so if I then set that to looping one two three 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 one so you could change the loop length and where it starts. So you've got a sort of a, a you know range of options for your sampling there. That's huge. It is only mono, but it's a really really good addition for something like this. You can just oh auto panning, how lovely. You can just you know make all sorts of little things. You could then put that into a, a loop and then record it onto one track of your tape machine and then just keep recording little loops. Huge, huge possibilities. Tremolo. As with the tremolo of most guitar amps. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
number of things you can do with this. I keep saying this, but it's worth saying it's masses. And then from program number 90 up to 100 is basically a load of 10 spare patches that you can just fling any old thing in. Old strings. I remember doing that when I was a penniless student with this and I had to take my bass strings off and boil them in a saucepan or scrape the strings off to get that brightness back. <laughs> old strings was simply an EQ program. I think, uh, oh dear, oh dear, that is rather draconian. It's just lots and lots. Maybe I just added that to the mix. Very, very trebly, as you can hear. And there you have it you have an extremely capable effects device and they're on eBay for very little. You can, well, I've, in fact, I saw one yesterday for 60 pounds. That was a starting price, but no bids. So plenty and plenty of stuff around the Alesis Quadroverb.